Howdy! It's Ryan from Not Surround a Table. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'm very excited because this is the very first live stream episode to kick off what I like to call Uwe Rosenberg Month, which is a whole month of just Uwe Rosenberg games wall to wall. If you are newish to uh, the board game hobby and you don't really know who Uwe Rosenberg is, stick around because you're just going to hear like nothing but Uwe Rosenberg, all Uwe, all the time. Uh, who, who we got in chat? Let's see, it's Oberon. Hello, Oberon. Hey, Poppy. Good, glad that you could join us. DJ Mach V, are you going to be modding for us today? I hope so, because, you know, people get up to shenanigans in these streams. And BDM's here. <laughs> no, Agricola. Uh, DJ Mach V, are you not a big Agricola fan? Did you not know what we were doing today? That's right, we're playing Agricola, or at least I'm playing Agricola. I thought that I would try the solo mode, and uh, I wanted to have a promotional calendar up for Uwe Bear Rosenberg Month, but I'm not a very good... Uh, uh, planner let's say and so I started like sticking stuff on the calendar I'm like I don't know when I'm gonna do this when I'm gonna do that and I've got a couple of games on the way courtesy of uh, Asthma Day Canada they were gonna send me a copy of Halatau and Patchwork Christmas but I don't know when they're gonna arrive so I felt weird like hard coding stuff to a calendar things feel really etched in stone when I put them on a calendar you know what I mean I get kind of nervous about it I don't like to do it uh, I'm gonna get correct I have I made sure that I had some nice music. I'm excited because I'm gonna, I have a whole range of music for you to listen to while we play, all the way from bluegrass to hoedown. Uh, but it struck me as I was setting everything up that it would make more sense to have the kind of music that's just like spooky terror inducing for this game. If you don't know this game, this is one of, or I think Uwe Rosenberg's most famous game. He's a German designer, and so he made this game called Agricola, which is Latin for farming. And in it, you're a farmer, and you have a little little homestead, and you're, you're doing a little farming. And it's a worker placement game, and so what that means is that there are different spots uh, on the board, and these are going to get flipped over as we go through the rounds and each one lets you do a thing. Normally, in a multiplayer game, there's fierce competition for the spots. And the scary thing about this game is that there are harvest periods. So at the end of every stage, there's a harvest. And it, <laughs> you see there are fewer cards up here than there are up here. Harvest comes faster and faster every year. Somehow, it gives you the feeling like the Earth is spinning around the sun faster and faster and faster. And when you get to harvest, you have to feed all the members of your family. And if you don't feed all the members of your family, you have to take a begging card. And for every food that you're unable to feed your family, you have to take a separate begging card that's worth negative three points. Not so good. And that, I think, is where all the pressure is because, like, you think, man, everything's gonna go okay. As long as I can just get that read space, as long as I can put my family member on there and just get all I need is one read, and then it's fine. I'll be able to feed my family because of this and that and the other. And then some dinkus at the table takes read and it's just it you just you want to flip the table at that point i mean there's no other option it's uh something i think it's a style of game that i think some people find fun and some people find absolutely too stressful but the reason i mentioned uve rosenberg month was i was i said i was going to try to stick some stuff on the calendar what you can count on, I'll, I'll let you know just verbally what you can look forward to. So this weekend is very exciting. Uh, I'm going to be playing with Omelette slash David, who's another one of our moderators, and uh, a patron on the Patreon. I might as well throw, yeah, why not? Bajoo, there it is. Uh, so there's the uh, there's the link to the Patreon. Uh, I'm not just, I'm not saying that he's going to play with me on camera because he's a patron. I mean, but it doesn't hurt. But if you saw the Halloween stream, you saw David playing against me a copy of Wingspan, but he wasn't in the flesh. The good thing is that David lives just a couple towns over, so he's actually going to be here in person right next to me, probably on this side, and we're going to play... What are we going to play? We're going to play Aura at Labora together, and it'll be my first time playing that game if I don't get to squeeze a game in with my wife Cheryl before that happens. Maybe I should, because I don't, don't fully grasp Aura at Labora. And that's going to be on Saturday night. So every single Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, that's 5 p.m. Pacific time, and then British Standard Time? I don't know. Uh, it's funny, why are we putting up a cover of Wingspan? Oh yeah, because we played Wingspan. Thank you so much for that. So you can put up a cover of Aura at Labora as well, because I don't know if people super know that game. Like we were saying in the Discord server, it's been out of print for a little bit, and thankfully BDM sent me a copy of it. Uh, but like, 
nine months ago or something and I haven't been able to touch it yet. Ah, it's Uwe Rosenberg month. So every Thursday, which is the slot you're looking at now, I'm going to be playing a game live and every Saturday night at that time slot, Saturday evening, if you can't make it during the workday schedule, I'm going to be playing a game. So this week it's, and with a guest star too, so this week it's Omelette playing Wingspan? No. He's going to be playing Aura at Labora, and then the week after that is going to be Cheryl, play, that's my wife Cheryl, playing Le Havre with me. That's the one about the harbor. And then the week after that, it's going to be me and Dave, not David, but Dave. If you remember, Dave played Zaya with me, and we're going to be playing A Feast for Odin. And then the week after that, if Asmodee pulls through, you're going to see Sean again. Sean, if you'll remember, was on the stream where we opened up all the Eagle Griffin games and Sean decided that he wanted to play Halatau with me. So we're gonna play that one together. So that's all the Saturdays covered. Now I wanted to ask you about the Thursdays. Today, it's Agricola Solo. The way that Agricola Solo works is it's a beat your own score thing. You just play and you get a score. But they also have sort of like a campaign thing where you play and you beat your score, you try to get to 50 points. And then some of the cards you have you reserve and then you play again holding those cards but then the score threshold goes up. And then you play a third time and you hang on to a couple more cards and your score threshold goes even higher. So you're starting with hopefully better and better cards maybe uh, but your requirement of getting points goes higher and higher and higher as you go through the campaign. So a couple of ideas. I could devote every Thursday in this Uwe Rosenberg month. What, what is Heimlich and Co? Is, was, that, was that supposed to be Hollertau? The way this cover feature works, by the way, is it pings Board Game Geek to the, to the, uh, this, the search on Board Game Geek. And so if you type in, uh, if you type in the game name and, and something else comes up, it's because that thing was higher on search than the thing that you put in, if that makes any sense. So we can't always rely on it to show the proper cover, but thank you anyway, DJ Lucky, for trying. Oh, uh, you're trying to put Zaya up there? If, I'm sure if you put cover Zaya Legends of a Drift system, that will, it's a lot of typing, but it'll probably come up instead of I'm looking company or <laughs> whatever BGG thinks that has to do with what we're trying to look at. Great, so. Thursdays, we could play through the whole solo campaign. I could just keep going until I fail to meet the threshold. I don't know. If you guys are here, I don't know if that would be interesting or boring. Hoedown music is a teensy bit loud. Thank you very much for letting me know. I'll crank the hoedown music. Let me know if the bluegrass music is loud and if the country music is loud because I've got all genres represented on the stream today. Uh, so, uh, sorry, let me just say, hey, there's Zaya. Hooray. Right. Zaya is correctly pronounced Zaya. I finally looked at the Kickstarter campaign and they pronounced their own game properly. Great. Hello, hello. Uh, who are we seeing here? Uh, DJ Mar yeah, Mystery Farm. I don't have anything on my farm quite yet, but I will. Do, 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 do. Oberon asks, what's a, what's a 2007 release? Is that uh, Orat Lamora? Talking about Chris O'Dowd? I've missed a lot. I've missed a lot. I haven't been looking at what you guys are talking about. <laughs> cool. Uh, so that's one thing I could do, or another thing I could do, I was looking at, I don't really have a whole lot of excuse to play my weirdo expansion content. So this game, Agricola, has an expansion called Farmers of the Moor. Let's see how fast DJ Mod V can like respond and get that cover up. And so I could play Agricola with Farmers of the Moor. There's also a Caverna that I could play solo, and then I have Caverna the Forgotten Folk, if you've never seen how that works. So I could play through some like weird expansion stuff. Now, speaking of weird expansion stuff, we have decisions, you and me, to make off the top of this game. And I'll, sh I'll show you what I'm talking about, if I can just reach them over here. So, if you've never played Agricola, and I think most of you have, actually hands up in chat if you've never played Agricola. Because that would that'll that's going to help me figure out how explicit to get about teaching this game while I play. I'm going to dive in, but if you never played, the you get uh, two types of cards. You get occupation cards, and you get minor improvement cards. Minor improvements are just little things that you can do around your farm that help you farm better and feed your family better. And then the occupations are really the same thing. They're just in a different class, and they're governed by a different action space. So. I have, this is not the Agricola that you can buy in the store today because they did like a second printing, uh, revised edition is what it's called. This is the OG Agricola, the original gangster Agricola. And the differences are not major, but there are a few. One of the differences is that you get a whole ton more cards in OG Agricola. So you get three decks, the basic deck, the interactive deck, and the complex deck, EI and K. 
And then I also, uh, when I originally bought this game, my copy goes back so far that we didn't even have animeeples. We just, all of the animals and everything was just little round discs. The wheat was a little round yellow disc. The vegetables were a little round orange disc. And so they came up with a product called the goodies, which let you upgrade all of your components to what we now call animeeples. So let me show you one. Here is what a cow looks like. So these come standard in the game in the revised edition now but they cut back on a bunch of the cards that they put in the game. They thinned out the decks as different cards. But with the OG and with the goodies, uh, these are the options that we have. So I thought we could like put it to a vote. Uh, what can I tell you about these decks? Very little. The basic deck is basic stuff. The interactive deck might not be good for a solo game because it, 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 it I think, lends itself more to, uh, you know, this player does this and you get to do that or these two do this and you can do that. So I think there's a lot more player interaction cards in there. And the complex deck is kind of ridiculous. It's like if you do this in round one, then by round seven, you'll trigger this chain reaction. It's just kind of like hard to get your mind around. The O deck and the C deck, I don't. I have no idea. I've never played with them before. I don't know. Maybe in chat, if you know about them, you can uh, you can tell me what what there is to recommend them. But I mean, let's uh, let's be explorers. Let's be adventurers. So I'm going to put this actually to a vote. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Can you remove the uh, Can you remove the cover? I think I can remove the cover. Zang. Hey, hey, look at that. It's pretty good. So let me go. Everyone's wondering why Zaya is on the screen. So let's launch a straw poll. So you're going to type exclamation mark vote uh, one, two, three, four, or five. Uh, for which deck that you think that I should play with today. The basic deck is going to be Vote Space 1, Interactive Deck Vote Space 2, Complex Deck Vote Space 3, Oh, o with an umblot <laughs> deck is a 4, and C with a... What is even that? Is that a circumflex? I don't know what that accent character is, but it's above the C. So, <laughs> so, so far, so far, 1 is leading the pack deck one the basic deck everyone's like ryan we we know how you play board games don't make it more complicated than it needs to be uh, <laughs> oh there's a dark and audible's going for five that's a, that's a that's a dark horse choice <laughs> obviously okay i think i think we can <laughs> i think we can close it out there uh let's let's uh let's end the poll so the basic deck is winning out <laughs> Like, don't, don't do anything complex, Ryan. It's not going to work well. All right. <laughs> fair. That's fair. Let me get rid of these. Let me get rid of the poll. It's the uh, Corbarius deck, I believe, in the full name. I have it in my review copy, but have you played it over on? Is it good? Is it bad? Is there a reason why everybody stayed right the heck away from it? Complex deck, I understand. The complex deck is a bit... I can show you a couple of the, the cards for the complex deck. First of all, look at all the writing on this card. When you take a family growth action, you can pay one food to immediately place the off screen, uh, offspring in your... I, I read butt. You're not putting any babies in your butt. Do you ever wake up... <laughs> I have... I have eyesight problems today, I have to confess to you. I haven't put on my glasses because I, I wear them so seldom that whenever, in the rare cases where I do need to wear them, I get headaches from them. So I thought, I'll just I'll just try to survive. But now I'm reading that you have to put, put the new family member in your butt. Uh, this allows you to take an action with this round. If you do this, the offspring does not count as a newborn see like all the all the cards that there there's like a paragraph of text on each each one of them they're a little bit a little bit snarly oberon's only played the basics so far oh great thanks for the chapter marker so i i do have a little uh, a little gizmo a little uh, where are we check this out oh yeah oh yeah and while you contemplate that i just need to weed out a couple cards ryan why didn't you do this before the stream well, because I would have had just a whole table full of a million different cards. So when you're playing solo, you gotta make sure that you don't have any cards in the decks that are not for one plus players. So let me just quickly go through and take out all the three pluses and four pluses, which is, it seems like most of them. So just anything with a purple tag, I'm allowed to keep. And you generally deal seven, uh, seven of each type of card to each player, but much like 
terraforming Mars, people find this is uh, more exciting when you get to do a little bit of a draft because the worker placement spots, they never change. They come out in a slightly different order depending on the way that these decks are shuffled, but they generally, uh, they generally don't change. They're common to all players. The thing that does change are which cards that you get as a player, which occupations and which minor improvements. So, like, essentially you're, you're, you're going to be basing your entire strategy around which cards you pull. So just like Terraforming Mars, uh, people don't really, oh, who, Nerdy Tom, thank you so much for following on Twitch. I appreciate that, Nerdy Tom. And if you are planning, if you thought about hitting that follow button, but you haven't taken the plunge yet, you'll be excited to know that on Saturday night when David and I play What's It Called together, or at Labora, uh, we are going to be administering the Sacrament of Confession. And if you confess your board game sins to us, we will forgive you for the power vested in us in board games. And we'll also maybe just uh, uh, give you a little penance to do because <laughs> there's a little bit of atonement I'm sure you have to make. Look forward to that. Those are all the occupation cards for one player. And let me just spin through. The music is loud in comparison to Ryan's voice. No problem. That's easily fixed. Boom. It's a really hard balance to strike because... <laughs> um, it's in my ear, right? And I'm playing it through VLC. Oh, are there are no... Wow, are all occupation cards for all people? There's no player... I don't think there's any player limits on these, so we don't have to go through them. But I will shuffle them. Shuffle, shuffle. So yeah, it's going in my ear. And so VLC has its own volume level. And then my you're hearing my desktop audio. So that has its own volume level. And then OBS has its own volume level. And so I haven't quite figured out what number all of those three things need to be at for you to be able to hear me, but not the music too loud and the music's not too loud in my ear so I can't hear myself talk. Because I like hearing myself talk. All right, let's call that shuffle. I'm terrible at shuffling. Do you know how, I don't know, have you watched any YouTube videos? I thought about doing this. I thought about watching those YouTube videos where people are doing like, I don't know, cardistry. And because look how terrible that is. Man, if you invited me over, you wouldn't let me touch your cards ever again. Uh, oh, blah, mash. Oh, look, they're getting all bent. It's all good. So I'm going to give these a little shuffle. Do, 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 do. Good. You just got, you guys just don't like bluegrass. That's what you're trying to tell me. <laughs> Woo! I didn't see it. It's all good. So, to simulate... Uh-oh, there's a minor improvement that got in there. To simulate the draft in a solo game it was recommended to me that i deal 10 of each card and pick seven so maybe you can help me decide because uh, hands up if you've played this solo one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and now do you think that i should have the occupations and the minor improvements to evaluate at the same time because they can you know they can bounce off of each other. I don't have the screen space to do it, but let me know in chat what you think. Hand up. Poppy has played solo. Poppy, what's your best score? I'd like to know. Have you beat 50? I'm nervous that I won't beat 50. <laughs> Just based on my track record on these streams. Let's acquaint ourselves with these cards. I'm not too sure if you can read the uh, the text, maybe if you make the window big, but I'll read through them. The Mason, once during the game at any time after your stone house reaches at least four rooms, you may extend it by one room at no cost. Whew, that's tough, man. Getting to four room stone house, that's, that's, that's tough. Stable master, one and only one of your unfenced stables may hold up to three animals of the same type. So you get expanded stable. The merchant, whenever you use the minor improvement or minor or major improvement action, you can pay one food to use the action a second time. Interesting. Plow driver. Once you have a stone house, so I'm going to put him over here with other stone house guy. Once you have a stone house, you can pay one food at the start of each round to plow at most one field. That's interesting. Hmm. <laughs> the grocer. Yeah, so you make a big stack of, of food here and then... Anytime you can buy the top item for one food, so you're just chipping down through. Yeah, I've used the grocery before. He's interesting. He's interesting. First game, 17 points, Poppy? Wait, 31? Oh my god. Are you serious? You didn't come anywhere. <laughs> you didn't come anywhere near 50. 17 points in your first game solo. I'm nervous. 
BDM requires me to take the grocer, the renovator, and the hedge keeper. So he's played this enough that he he knows he knows exactly who's who and what does what. Let, let me just <laughs> let me just read through them here. The hedge keeper. Whenever you build at least one fence, you can build up to one additional fences without paying the additional wood. That's very good. I can see why. I can see why you like that. Chief. At the end of the game, you receive one bonus point for each room in your stone house. There's another stone house guy, so I'm going to move him up with the stone house crew. Uh, put the grocery down here. This is what BDM is, is uh, recommending. The stone carrier. Whenever you take stone, oh, another stone. With an additional, with an action, you can take an additional stone. Hmm. He goes up here, the stone crew. If you also receive other building resources, this costs you one food. Oh, maybe not as good. Uh, the the clay delivery man place one clay on each of the spaces, runs six to 14. At the start of those rounds, you get the clay. Okay, I've seen those before. Pay two less clay to renovate a clay hut and pay two less stone to renovate a stone house, which kind of puts him up here with the stone crew. Now I get to keep seven of these. BDM is saying that I definitely want, let me look at that again. You definitely say I want the grocer, the renovator, and the hedge keeper. Where is the renovator? You like this guy, eh? The renovator though, he played like, look at all this stone stuff that's going on. Would you pursue a stone strategy? Different people like different strategies, right? And my friend Michael Todd is all about, in any worker placement game, he's all about getting like the additional family, getting the more workers to put on more spaces. But there's a lot of diminishing returns though, isn't there with that strategy? Because at least in a multiplayer game of Agricola, what you can really run into is uh, you have all these extra people, but like there's no good spaces left on the board to take, right? Because you might not be first in player order. All the good stuff gets used up and you're like, oh, I guess I'll use this family member to like, I don't know, take a clay and you don't even need the clay. And, uh, and the, the problem with Agricola is that family member is costing you food, right? That they're eating food and you have to keep them thriving and surviving. They are worth points though at the end of the game. My best was after 30 games or so, says BDM. The grocer pays for itself in saved actions. Okay, I trust you. I trust you, I'm gonna hang on to the grocer. Do you think this, this whole stone nonsense that's brewing is worth pursuing? I mean, it's not like you get to play all of these occupations necessarily. You still have to take an action to play them. You like this free fence guy, eh? Pay two less clay to renovate a, renovate a hut. Pay two less stone to renovate a stone house. All right, on your recommendation, I'm going to take those three, and I get to keep four more. I'm going to take I'm going to take the the mason, the plow driver. One, two, three, four, five. Six, I'm gonna take the chief. I don't like the stone carrier as much. Yeah, actually, no, I do. So yeah, I'm gonna take all those stone guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So possibly pursuing a stone strategy, but again, you don't get to play all of the, uh... well, you know what? I'm gonna keep them to the side because we haven't seen the minor improvements yet. So here are the minor improvements. To choose one. Drop the Mason, says DJ Mock V. I know nothing about this game. <laughs> I will. I might not listen to you, DJ Mock V, on that one. One, two, three, four. Oh, five. Sorry, I forgot what I was doing. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, what I've got. Again, BDM is just looking at the names going like, oh, easily that one, that one, and that one. But the minor improvements. Uh, costs of wood, the corn scoop. Oh, I've had this before. Whenever you use the take green action, you get an additional grain. Great. You need three occupations to play the lettuce patch, which is possible in a solo game. In a multiplayer game, like everyone's trying to get their occupations out, and there's like only, depending on the number of players, there's only one occupation slot. So it's really hard, sometimes two, it's really hard to get those occupations out, but maybe not so much in a solo game. On this card, you can plant vegetables as you would on a field. Vegetables on this field can be converted to four food when harvested. Wow. This card does not count as a field when scoring. Interesting. Stone tongs cost a buck. Whenever you use one of the stone action spaces that become available in stage two and four, you receive an additional stone. Since I'm looking at a stone strategy, that might be an interesting one to hang on to. When you play this card, you receive one vegetable. That kind of like pairs with that one nicely. The mini pasture. When you play this card, immediately fence one space on your farmyard. 
you don't have to pay wood. Wow, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. I'll put that in the possible keepies. What's chat saying about these guys? Prioritize cheap points. Okay, what do you call a cheap point though? I need to clarify that. The clocks. At the end of the game, you receive one bonus point for a clay hut or two bonus points for a stone house. Again, that kind of like stacks with my stone strategy. Whenever you turn one wood into food using the joinery, sawmill, or cabinet maker, you receive one additional food. Eh, windmill. At any time, you can convert grain to two food. Meh. Uh, spindle. When you have three to five sheep during the field phase of a harvest, you receive half an additional food. What the heck is going on with the spindle? I don't even know. I'm already going to say no to the spindle because what is up? Uh, the, <laughs> the drinking trough. Each pasture, with or without a stable, can hold two more, up to two more animals. Ooh, pretty good. Pretty good. I like that. Uh, so I'm going to hang on to seven. I already like these three. Any, anything speaking to anybody? Anybody going, oh my god, you absolutely must have the, <laughs> the spindle. Oh man, I've dropped it on the floor and there it shall stay. Wood, one, uh, wood for one point is very good. Which one is that? <laughs> Did I keep that one? Name the card. Name the card. I'm already getting overwhelmed and confused. Oh, this one. Yes. But I have to have the joinery sawmill or cabinet maker. Which is what a major improvement, I guess, right? Oh, no. Cabinet maker looks like a uh, an occupation. Yeah, the other ones aren't amazing. Uh, you drinking trough. You like the drinking trough? Yeah, I'm keeping the drinking trough for sure. I'm keeping these three, so I get to pick four more. And none of them are really speaking to me. The mini pasture costs two food, but gets you free. Sure, I'll take that. One, two, three, four. So three more. Trade a food for a vegetable. That's pretty good. One, two, three, four, five. I'll take the corn scoop. Why not? And the lettuce patch. Let's call that. Yeah, lettuce patch possibility. I agree. So lettuce patch. Great. Those are my cards. You'll see them again. They're going away at the moment. Alrighty. Who did I hang on to? Not these guys. These guys get chucked. And there are our cards for this solo game of Agricola. Fantastic. Now, what I have not done is I have not paid down the spaces yet. So, off the top of the game, or off the top of any round, we're in stage one, round one, you have to pay down all the spaces now. This normally, this space normally receives three food, but I've put the two token on there to remind me that it only gets two wood every single round. So. If, I, if you see me mess that up. The other change in the solo mode is that your people cost one clay. Your people cost uh, three food instead of two food to feed. Which makes me nervous. This whole game makes me nervous, I won't lie. Okay, everything's paid down. <laughs> let's, let's see. Uh, whew. Oh boy, here we go. Maybe uh, DJ Mag V or somebody can set a marker for like the game begins. So this is, uh, it's a little bit cut off at the top, but this is fences. Fences, build fences. Okay. And then down here on my farm, I have, I start with two rooms. I have all my pieces. I did uh, put the stickers on the little farmers because I thought that was kind of cute. So two ladies are my initial farmers. One love, there we go. I have a, I have, I have a friend named Andy, uh, who's uh, who's gay, and he, he was mad that Agricola was so heteronormative, so he uh, he's like, no, he's a children. It's, I said, well, it's not necessarily. His new family members is what the thing called. Ah, oh, family growth. He goes, I I think he goes, I think the people that I'm gaining in Agricola are like sexy farm hands to help me, you know, till the soil. I'm like, fine, imagine it however you like, Andy. That's cool. Great. <laughs> Here we go. Ah, step one. I don't know what to do. I have two people. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just the performance anxiety. You don't know. If you've never done it, you don't know. And you know what? On Saturday, <laughs> on Saturday, David's going to know because he's going to be here in the flesh <laughs> and he'll see the pressure. He'll feel it with a game that we're not that familiar with either. Gurikula I've played a million times. 
but I'll still I'll still make mistakes. <laughs> Here we are. I wonder if it's worth just getting one of these occupations out right away. Probably the grocer, right? Because that's like a that's a this is a card that pays dividends. So yeah, let's uh, let's move one person to the occupation space. A player's first occupation is free, and additional occupations cost one food. So yeah, let's do that. The grocer is going to go here. Now I have to get the stack of goods right. Pile from bottom to top. Here we go. One vegetable. Uh, these uh, these things, by the way, I should mention. These are are I'm, I'm pulling tokens out of these wood things. It's because uh, Laser Rocks makes inserts for board games. They make wood inserts. They sent me an insert for Agricola. And if you saw the video, I got halfway through the thing before realizing that it doesn't fit OG Agricola. It only fits the revised edition. So I have these left over. One of the things I was considering doing during Uwe Rosenberg month was doing a uh, an episode of Bits Please. Bits Please! where I sit down with my Agricola, OG Agricola box and design a uh, design an insert around it to, to put it put on my 3D printer. Let me know if you think that would be cool or boring and stupid. Here we go, one vegetable, one reed. I was just showing you that because it's just to justify how hard it was to pull it out of the wooden boxes. I like plastic, one clay, because you can do scooped scooped bottoms with plastic, plastic and it's easier to stick your fingers in. Uh, Wood, vegetable, stone, wood. How is this not going to tip over? Vegetable, it makes more sense when it's discs. Vegetable, stone, green, reed. Anytime you can buy the top item for one food. In the multiplayer game, everybody starts with a certain amount of food depending on where they are in player order. In the solo game, you know, get nothing. No, no, nothing. Poppy says we're rooting for you. Thanks, Poppy. That would be cool. It says share, 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 share your bears. I have uh, original, and I'm using the the craft boxes. Are you using like the Plano boxes? Is that what you mean by craft boxes? I have a few Plano boxes for my. Those are the, like the fishing tackle ones, right? I have a few of those for my Uwe Rosenberg games, but I'm just starting, and you'll see an episode of Bits Plays coming up where I. 3D print and insert for one of Ube's games, and it's uh, the planos are fine, but man, if you want to have a really good time, <laughs> get yourself a 3D printer. Here we go. So that was the first thing that I'm going to do. The second thing that I'm going to do, once again, I, have you ever done this in Agricola? Have you ever just like gunned straight for the stone house like right away? Have you ever done that? Like, like got it like a two room. Like go to you got to go from wood to clay to stone. Have you ever just like fast tracked your way to a stone house? I'm wondering if that would be a good idea or a bad idea. Let's take a look at these guys again. Whenever you build at least one fence, no. Pay two less clay to renovate a clay hut. But I can't renovate yet because the renovate action is not available yet. and doesn't come out for a few more rounds. So he's going to kind of like, the renovator is just going to sort of stay up there. And there's, a, there's not even a stone space right off the top of the game, right? Either the stone space comes out a little bit later. So stone carrier, we can kind of like set aside too. He's a later thing. It's kind of like a little bit like terraforming Mars, right? So I can't play these cards quite yet. The chief is like at the end of the game for stone house. Once you have a stone house, okay. Uh, once during the game, at any time after your stone house reaches, <laughs> stone house, stone house, stone house. I did it to myself. Okay. Receive one vegetable. When you play this card, immediately fence one space in your farmyard, which is pretty cool because we're getting animals out soon. All right, one thing that I didn't mention, by the way, if you don't know Agricola very well, these are the major improvements in the game. So these are things that help you cook your food. And almost every single time I've played Agricola, I've always gone nuts for the, which one is it? The the cooking hearth. There's a cheap cooking hearth and an expensive cooking hearth, and it's a bit of a race to get them, right? One costs an extra clay than the other one does. Uh, or you can build a fireplace and trade it in as the cost for the cooking hearth, which I don't really like that much. But I've, I've gone for this because, you know, it gives you all kinds of options for converting different things that aren't food into food. You can't just bite a sheep. You have to convert, you have to cook it first, so you need an oven to do that. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well... <laughs> 
<laughs> well, if I'm going to renovate, I'm going to need a lot of clay, but I'm going to want that to build up. I need six food by here. I should be able to get that, no problem. This one gets me two food. Plow a field. Build a room. Room building is so expensive. Running your banner is cool, but it blocks the top of the road. Yeah, I, yeah, you're right. You're right. I can get rid of it for the moment. There you go. The well is also excellent. Who's talking about the well? Are we talking about a card? Oh, we're talking about the major improvements, the well. I just noticed this morning that they just put more of the decks on uh, PGA for Agricola. Oh, the new ones that come with the, the revised one? I think what I will do, since I started with no food, and you might think that this is a terrible move, but I'm going to go and grab some food. And then that makes it so that it is the end of uh, that round. So you take all your people back. Let me take all my people back. They go back in my farmhouse. It is not harvest yet. We go when we flip over the next, next thing. And it's going to be one major or minor improvement. Fantastic. And that can also, you know, that can also inform your strategy too, right? The, the order in which those things come out. So these are the minor improvements. I think this one's really important to get out, but it costs of wood. But that's okay. Whenever you use one of the stone action spaces that becomes available in stage two and four, you receive one additional stone. That's super important to my strategy to get out. So I think I think that's that's a high priority. Let me just check the other ones real quick. If you plant vegetables on the card, that's fine. I don't have any vegetables. When you take rain action, you get one more. If you play this card, you receive one vegetable. These pair nicely, don't they? But one costs a grain. This costs three occupations. Oh my god, it's not going to happen anytime soon. Each pasture, each pasture with or without a stable can hold two more animals. That's not going to come into play for a little bit at the end of the game. Whenever you build at least one fence, you can build up to three additional fences without paying any additional wood. Okay. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this lady. Oh, sorry, I forgot to pay down. Who's policing me? So two more wood here. One clay here, one additional reed here, and one additional food over here. So I'm going to take my lady farmer and grab four wood is the first thing. And then I'm going to take this farmer and I'm going to put her here and I'm going to pay one wood in order to build the stone tongs, which are getting me extra stone when the stone comes out. Okay. Poppy says, I'm enjoying the graphic design of the cards from this perspective. Somehow never notice the hexes. I don't usually see hexes in Uve games. It's nice. Which cards are we talking about? Not these ones. Uh, corn scoop is a good option early as well if you want to get two grain per take one grain. Yeah, it is a good option. You're right, you're right. And it'll probably come up actually faster than than the um, than the stone one would. I do speaking of wood, I do have wood to be able to do it. Well, anyway, that is all she wrote for round two so i'm gonna grab my people take it back it goes pretty fast i think <laughs> after all the thinking is done and then we're going to flip this one and it's going to be one sheep so let me pay it down in order when you play multiplayer do you have like people assigned to different spots because i find you know it's easy to forget where to put stuff one food here and then one sheep bat there you go Woo. All right, so this is the second last round before harvest and I'll need six food to feed my people. I presently have two food. <laughs> Great. All right. I'm not good at this game since Practical Dream. Just a sucker for making fields, if it, even if it isn't the best decision. I, I hope I've done good things, but food, let's, let's talk about food. Well, I mean, there's three food here. here. So if I wait one more round, I'll just be able to go to the fishing spot and get all of the food and feed my people. So I'm not too worried about 
about food. So that's okay. And I forget where the grain for the corn scoop comes out. Does the grain come out in stage one or is that a stage two thing? I think it's a stage one thing, which means it's, it's that card. Correct me if I'm wrong. A little bit of memorizing there. So I think, <laughs> so in order to have animals, you have to be able to fence them in, but you do get to have one pet in your house. So I could grab the sheep, but I have no way to cook the sheep. Maybe I should take a look at what these major improvements cost and what they do for me. Hmm, three clay gets me a fireplace and then a fireplace gets me a cooking hearth or four clay gets me a cooking hearth. Interesting, interesting, interesting. So four clay, that'll be at four clay by the next round. So in the next round, if I get the clay and the food, I'll be able to feed my family and I'll have enough in stage two to build a cooking hearth. That's pretty good. What do I do in this round though? Maybe get that corn scoop out like it was suggested. I think I'll go with your suggestion in chat. Thank you very much. So we're gonna go up here to one major or minor improvement and I'm gonna pay a wood in order to build my corn scoop, which is off camera, but you can trust me it's there. And for the second person, I'm a little bit lost as to what to do with the second person. Hmm. For the second person, I will. Let me think, let me think, let me think. <laughs> oh. You know what, I'm going to, instead of paying the wood and building the corn scoop, sorry, I untook your suggestion. I'm going to build Oh no, I need three occupations to do that, don't I? Okay, yeah, back to it. That's fine, corn scoop it is. <laughs> Great. <laughs> hey Varys, <laughs> thanks for joining us. <laughs> just <laughs> caught me just in the middle of like absolute analysis paralysis. I have no idea <laughs> what's happening. I don't know what to do with this, with this person, but if we're gonna go into a thing where we're getting extra grain then I think having, oh, there is a take one grain right on the, uh, right on the, in the default spaces. I kind of ignore these and I shouldn't, I know. So if I plowed a field, let's try that. I'm going to plow a field. Take grain, you think take grain. Well, I don't have, oh, I do have the corn scoop. Yes, thank you. Take grain. Whenever you take grain, says the corn scoop, you get an additional grain. So now I have two grain, hooray. And I wonder if there's a better way for me to put that over here so that you can see the resources that I have. Oh, you can see them down here, that's perfect. So now I've got two grain, fantastic. So instead of plowing, that's what I'll do. And now we are on round four. Is that accurate? I think so. So I'll take my people back. Step one. Step two is this thing gets flipped. It's going to sew or break, bake bread. <laughs> break bread and break wind. Here we are. La -da -do -do -do. Let me put the red arrows. So two wood up here. One clay over here. One reed here. One crucial fishing food right there. And an additional sheep. Bah. There we go. Okay. Thanks for that marker, by the way. That's going to make it like super, super easy to put those, uh, just to follow, just to follow. Even if you miss one, uh, the, the thing up here will help us. So the markers, by the way, if you're watching the VODs or the reruns, um, the YouTube has a feature where you can skip along to different chapters. So it just makes it easier to navigate the whole piece. That's what the markers are all about. And you don't have to be a mod to set them, by the way. If you want to set them yourself, exclamation mark M and Ryan tells the dumb story <laughs> put that in there no problem great so here we are so mission critical before I forget what has to happen is one of these ladies has to go here to take all the food so that they can eat at the end of this stage harvest great and then I think probably probably sewing would be a good idea right Bec oh no I, <laughs> I don't have any any plowed land to sew on okay so sewing's out what did I say was important I said taking the <laughs> the four clay so that I can build the oven was important, didn't I? I think I did. I think I did. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to take 
I'm gonna take the four clay. Now, in taking the four clay for the oven, that sort of deprives me of enough clay to be able to upgrade my house so that I can eventually get to stone, which is like my whole game is getting to that stone house. And I just noticed that for some reason, the, the zombie name tag is up there. Let me just get rid of that. There. <laughs> all good, we're all good. Four clay, is that a bad idea? Do you think taking that four clay? Because you need a lot of clay, right? You need a lot of clay to, to upgrade your house to build new rooms, depending on what material you're talking about. You only need one clay per room. Oh, thank you, to upgrade the house. Thank you for reminding me, but it's five clay per room to add, you know, new rooms. And when, when baby making spaces come along. Yes. Okay, well, I'm gonna hang on to that. And I'm gonna take my people back. You come back, you come back. Now it's harvest time. So the way that harvest works is if you, you have to feed your, I'm just gonna get this little card so that I make sure that I'm doing it in the right order. The way that harvest works is, uh, the order's not on there, but you have to feed your family. <laughs> <laughs> so it's three food per family when you're playing per family member when you're playing the solo game. So I'm gonna take all three of my of my foods and ditch them. To do to do so they're fed. If you have any any vegetables or grains on plowed pastures, then they uh, you can harvest them before you have to feed your family. And then after you feed your family, if you have any barnyard animals out there in pastures, you have at least two somewhere, they make a baby. But if you have six, they still make one baby. It's a weird sheep orgy situation. I'm not gonna explain it. Talk to Uwe, send your angry emails to him. Great, 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 great. So that means that we are on to stage six. And one, two, three, four. Round one of stage six. Stage six, stage two of six is what I'm trying to say. Great. Flip this one and it's going to be one stone. Hooray, fantastic. Okay, now we're talking. So let me pay all this stuff down. We're gonna do two wood over here. This is gonna really heap up with wood, but that's kind of what I want to have happen. Clay, we've depleted. Reed, there's gonna be an absurd amount of reed on this space as well. Fishing only gets one food. And then there's a third sheep that goes here. And stone, if you'll remember, I have the stone tongs, which lets me get uh, an extra stone. And stone's gonna be really important because when that renovate comes, I'm gonna to wanna to, uh, to renovate to a stone house for sure, because all of my cards are about stone. Oberon says, three food per family. Wow, his solo games are cruel. Well, yeah, that's why Poppy got 17 points on her first go at it. Holy cow, 17. Did you say 17? It's some ridiculous low number. Here we are. Let me strategize. Strategize with me. Stone, that'll get me two stone. But I think the, the big thing that I wanted to do was just to be able to, we got three rounds until we hit another harvest and need six more food to feed these ladies so let's let's go to major improvement following along with my strategy which was to take four clay i'm going to pay all four of them and i'm going to take the you need to be able to cook you got to be able to cook your food i think so i'm going to take the cooking hearth now the cooking hearth is great because it allows you to convert at any time, you can cook vegetables to get three food out of them, sheep to get two food, wild boar gets three food, cattle gets four food. Amazing, cooking hearth, fantastic. So, and it's worth, a, it's worth a point at the end of the game. And BDM said, go for the easy points. BDM's probably tuned out because I'm playing horribly right now. It was a sad play, I hope to improve. My goodness. So I think we should start, so this is the other thing, and this is like a classic Uwe Rosenberg thing. If you played A Feast for Odin, it's a similar kind of thing. Uh, you have to score by filling in this farmyard. And right now I have only two spaces filled. So all of these spaces are gonna be worth negative points to me at the end of the game, negative one point each, which is really, really lousy. And this is also a game where you score based on the variety of stuff on your farm. So if you don't have vegetables, it docks you points. If you don't have grain, it docks you points. If you don't have a specific type of animal, it docks you points. Uh, so if you're not diverse, you can go all in on one strategy, but if you don't spread it around, you can lose a bunch of points in one area. Let's try not to do that. Let me take a drink. I'm getting ahead of myself. Mm -hmm. So what I want to do is start filling this in. And because I have grain to plant, I would really like a plowed pasture, I believe. 
plowed one field. Now, didn't I have a card in here that allowed me to plow another one? Let me see. When you play this card, immediately fence in one space. That's fencing, it's not the same thing. Whenever you build at least one fence. Did I lie to myself? Do I not have? I'm sorry, I, I got confused. I thought I had something that let me do something with plowing. Once during the game, stone house, stone house, <laughs> stone house, stone carrier. Whenever you take stone with an action, you also take one additional stone. Ooh, I want him out right now. I want him, I want him play him right now. Uh, pay two less to renovate to a clay hut. Pay two less stone. Yeah, he's very good too. But I want that stone carrier out because I have just this major, major stone requirement. So, okay, I'm gonna go down to the occupation and it's gonna cost me an additional food to do that. So because I've got the cooking hearth now, the sheep are two food apiece. So check it out, that's like two, four, six, boom, there's my food taken care of for this harvest if I needed it. I could just grab those sheep, oh, but I wouldn't have a place to put them and they would run away. Okay, good to know. <laughs> good, good to know. I still think it's the right thing to play this stone carrier right now. For some reason. So I'm going to play the occupation. I'm going to pay a food. And so any wheat can turn into a food. So I'm paying my wheat to use my stone carrier. Okay, cool, cool. Yes, fields, all the fields. Factor can dream, you're going crazy. Show some restraint. It's not all about the fields. So what does the grocer give you? So you have to pay a food, and it, it's kind of hard to see because it's top down on the camera, but it's, he's got this stack of stuff that you can buy for a food apiece. So if I spend a food, I get a reed. If I spend another food, I get a grain. Spend another food, I get a stone, da 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 da, all down the stack. That's kind of how it goes. And BDM convinced me to get this card and was so insistent about it that I played him first, and I now I'm wondering why. <laughs> why did I listen? BDM, if you can, if you can justify all that, <laughs> go, go crazy. Um, I just, I wonder if the take an extra grain and take an extra stone, if that plays into the grocery, like that, if that counts for the grocery stack. When you use one of the stone action spaces, says the stone tongs, so no. When you use take one grain, says the corn scoop, so no. Whenever you take stone with an action, you take an additional stone. Is this taking stone with an action? Using the grocery? I don't think it is. So I don't think any of my extra resource guys play into the grocer, which is kind of a drag. Hmm. So I've used both people, which means that we're on to the next round. Let me take them back. Whew, it's, it's going rapidly, you guys. Then we'll pay all this stuff. Well, let me flip this. The next action space. Oh, I just knocked over the grocer. Next action space is Family growth, also one minor improvement after family growth, if you expand your family, cool. So let me pay up the nonsense pile of wood over here. Um, one clay, one reed, one food for fishing, one sheep. So and or baked bread, great. So. I have four more moves left. So what I could do is take that honking pile of wood for one, so hold on, four things to do. Take the wood, build the fences, take the sheep, and then I would totally have enough food, no problem, plus enough sheep left over to breed. So that'd be pretty good, right? And how many, so, and that, that would be like, Sheep would be the very last thing I would have to do. So second to last would be build fences. Third to last would be take wood. And that's, that's this turn right here where I do something that isn't any of those things. <laughs> uh, I believe that worker equals action. So taking from the grocer would not count. Yeah, I agree. I don't, I don't think that those, that those special cards play into the grocer at all. Okay. So I've, I've, something's percolating here, right? You, you saw all of that. To, first you get the money, then you get the, 
the power, then you get the women. Um, oh, did I forget to pay down the stone? I did. I ignored it. Very important stone, crucial to my strategy. Okay, and I just wanted to double check that there isn't something in here. So I've got one thing that I can do before before Operation Sheep launches. Plant vegetables, no, I don't like it. Play this card. When you play this card, immediately fence one space in your farmyard. You do not need to pay wood for the fences. And that's a minor improvement. But it costs two food, and I don't have the two food. And it doesn't matter until there's more animals out. Agricola has a rule where you can't put animals of the same species in the same pasture because unnatural un, unnatural things happen. It's like a Island of Dr. Moreau situation. Um, so I'm not too excited about that until additional animals come out on the board. Drinking, and if you know Agricola very well, you know what that next card is going to be. I f forget. So I have no idea what's coming up. <laughs> if you want to tell me in chat, go go crazy. Each pasture with or without a stable can hold up to two more animals. That's interesting, but again, it's not all that compelling until there's more animals available. At the end of the game, you receive one bonus point because I'm going to be able to have enough wood to fence in. How many sheep am I going to be taking? Two, four. I'm going to be taking five sheep so one can live here, but I'm going to be eating them. So I just need four, one. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of wood. And there's easily that up here in this massive pile. No problem. Okay. <laughs> are we following along? So I don't think that any of these cards are going to do me any good right now. And we already just took a look at these. Oh, wait, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Whenever you build at least one fence, you can build up to an additional three fences without paying an additional wood. Yes. Right? But I would have to pay two food to do that, and I don't have the two food. Oh, no. Inefficiency. Hmm. Two food because you have to pay an additional food for each occupation you play. And I have two occupations down. And the first one's free, but this would cost me two food. And I don't have the two food. So really what I'm trying to piece together is what I should do. I, I have four four moves coming up before harvest. And I know what I'm going to do with three of them. I just got to figure out what I'm doing with this one. I mean, it, it's, it can't hurt to plow a field, can it? It can't hurt, right? can't hurt. I'm going to do that. going to plow a field. Stop me if it's a bad idea. Okay, here we go. I'll plow this field up here because I need my house to expand sort of this way. So there's that field. So I'm going to reserve these spaces for my big, what do I need, a five room house eventually to make good on all those cards. Great. Which I probably won't be able to get out in the amount of time that I have left. Already, already I'm getting nervous. Okay. Right, that was step number one. So for the next three actions, what did I say that I needed to do? I needed to take the wood, build the fences, get the sheep. Okay, so that means that this move is take it a wood. Whose idea was Uwe Rosenberg month anyway? This is nonsense. <laughs> this is nonsense. <sighs> and I might, like if you learn the rules to the game, it doesn't... Like, I have these how to play videos, right? But it doesn't convey the feeling of playing the game. You know what I mean? So I'm a little bit nervous about Aura at Labora. Nobody talks about it. I don't know how bonkers stressful that one's going to be. But that again, that's coming up Saturday night at 8. Please join me. Uh, correct, says BDM. Correct about what, BDM? Okay, so let me just take... The, I've got the wood that I need to enact my plan. Let me take these two back. Do -do -do -do. We'll go up one round. And... The last thing coming out is renovation. Very important for my strategy, but I don't have the clay to do it anymore. That's okay. Our clay stores will build up. So following the arrows, two more wood go on the wood space. One more clay goes on the clay space. One reed. That's hard to get out of a wood box. 
One read goes on the read space. That's so much read. Read, uh, my friend Michael Todd, who played this game like a whole pile back in the day, said that it kind of came down who, to who got the read first and then you knew who was going to win. I think that's a bit of hyperbole, but he did play it a whole lot more than I did. Da -da -da -da. Here we go. So it's a harvest round, which means I got to get that, but I already know what I'm doing. So the first step is going to be build fences, one wood per fence. So you can kind of like rope them off and plan out. Uh, so, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, I should probably hang on to some wood because I, I think I need some for my, my other cards. So if I do that, three pasture, is that a bit of a waste? Because I would need that to hold, I wouldn't need that to hold the sheep. There are five sheep on the board right now. I could put one in the house because you're allowed to have a pet and each space when it's uh, fenced in with a pasture can hold two animals. So I wouldn't need to do that. Instead I could do that, but then I wouldn't have enough to make a, another one. So that's it's not the worst idea. Those sheep are just going to pile up, you know what I mean? Hey, Stacy Everdell's here. Hello, Stacy Everdell. Hey, thank you for joining us. Are you a big Agricola fan, Stacy? We know you like a certain other game. <laughs> I won't say which. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eh, I don't know. I don't know if that's a bad idea or not. I don't want to get rid of that one wood because I need that one wood to do cool things. Do I need one wood or two wood to do cool things? The clogs is one wood. It's this drinking trough. Oh, the drinking trough. It doesn't do anything for me now. Hmm. No, yeah. Uh, mm. So if I pay one more wood, I'll be able to do that. Maybe that's more responsible. More responsible farming. More sustainable. I don't know what I'm talking about. You'll need that trough shortly with breeding. Thank you for the tip. Let's look at the drinking trough again. Each pasture with or without a stable can hold up to two more animals. And it costs two wood. So I don't know, would you do that? Would you would you pay the extra wood to be able to do this and have two pastures in anticipation of holding the extra animals? Or would you not pay that wood and make this because that sheep space is just gonna be like bonkers with sheep eventually, again. What do you think? Blue fences, who has the time to paint? I bought the wood that way. We're the blue family. We, we buy blue everything. We buy, our sheds are blue, our fences are blue. I don't know, what do you think, chat? What do you think? Would you pay the extra wood and do this? Or would you not pay the extra wood, hang on to it to build the drinking trough and do that? You could hold two, four, six sheep in there instead of four sheep and two of something else. Let me know. I want to know. Karate Kid can paint. Karate Kid can wax. Hmm. I'll take a drink while you guys weigh in. Trough it, says Oberon. Hello, Omelette. Thank you for joining us. You're just talking up your upcoming stream. Uh, <laughs> You're just trying to get me to sing. It's not going to work. Nice try. <laughs> Once again, the decision, if you're just joining us, and Omelette is, Omelette, I don't know whether to pay wood to build this structure here, two, two pastures, or to not pay the extra wood so that I can hold on to some to be able to play this card, which adds two animals per pasture. They're both compelling. Both very compelling options. I don't know. I... Trough is going to pick your pasture sized issue and you're big on the trough, eh, Oberon? And what's the and? You got... It's a 15 second chat delay. What is it? What is it, Oberon? Tell me. Tell me. What do you know, Oberon? Tr 
trough, 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 trough. All right. So that means that I am not going to pay that. I'm going to reserve this and I'm going to build a three pasture. And then with my last person, I'm going to go to sheep land and I get to do two sheep, two sheep. And we've got more than enough room for sheep, but uh, spoiler alert, they're not going to last long. <laughs> the poor sheep. There they are. Great, so that is the end of that. And now it is harvest phase at the end of uh, stage two. So I'm going to pay the food for my people. And to do that, I'm going to cook up some sheep. And I can cook up some sheep because I own the cooking hearth and sheep convert to two food. So that means that, sorry sheep, bah, delicious. Four, bah, six, because each of my people cost three food. There's six food right there. The sheep go back into the supply. So that is step one. I don't have any food growing yet on my farm, so I don't get any any extra food. And my people are fed, and now my, my animals breed. And because I have at least two sheep, I get a third sheep. Shazamity, all right. Now I take my people back, and I flip. We're on to stage three, and we're down to uh, negative two, round to negative two. Enjoy. Round zero, round one. That's what I'm trying for. Take one vegetable and place it in your personal supply is the new option. Thanks for the chapter marker, did you, Marky? Huh, maybe a smaller pasture. Now you're telling me, old Ron. Forget it, what's done is done. <laughs> After all that deliberation, like maybe, maybe not such a big pasture. Okay, so two would go here. Four clay go here, one reed goes here. Uh, one fish goes here. One stone goes here, piling up. And that's it, that's it for that. Now, think, think, think. This means that there's two rounds. I have four moves before we have to harvest again and get six food. You didn't know I was going to eat them. I didn't eat them. I sold them for money. And with the money, I bought food. What do you think? I am kind of, kind of monster? I'm not. They were sold for their wool. How do you think farming works exactly? I used the cooking hearth to carry them to market and sell the sheep. My goodness. Well, what are you accusing me of? Oh, okay. One sheep as a pet. Yeah, I didn't need to keep the sheep as a pet. I have enough room, plenty of room for the sheep. Uh, and I forgot to put the sheep on here. I have a blind spot on somebody. You ever do that? You're like, oh man, shouldn't we have an extra sheep? I don't know, I've got a blind spot to that sheep space. So four moves to get six food for the next harvest time. And I think it's like high time that I started planting some stuff, right? Feels like it, doesn't it? Hmm. Hey, Don, thanks for joining us. Cover the blind spot with the sheeple. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Sheep are on there now, I remembered. Think, 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 think. Think, think, think. Think, what do I do to get six food? If I planted, I would plant this one grain here and I get two grain on top of it and that would be two food. So with one action, I can generate two food big deal but if i took additional actions if i took one action to plow a field one action to take a grain and one action to sow that's three actions so one action for one food or three actions for two food but it would pay dividends <laughs> but here's the action the extra food that i can just grab and the sheep is always worth two food to me. So I think I'm good for food. And I do like the idea of, I do like this idea of just having, so the, the way it works if you never played Agricola is you, when you plant grain, you do that and then you get two more on top and then every harvest round you get to pluck one off the top and that becomes a food. And vegetables is the same thing except you only stack two. But you know, it, 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 it it pays off, plus you're filling up farm spaces in order to get points. Hmm. There's plenty of food in the river. Yeah, that's right, exactly, fish food.
Why are there 4,000 reads on this page? That's a great question. They just accumulated. I haven't purchased them yet because that's the other thing that I want to do. A bunch of my cards revolve around a stone house strategy. So it would be one per room for a clay hut and one per room for a stone house plus a major or minor improvement. I should really think about this. So to do that, I would, it wouldn't be a food thing though. I would need the, the clay is one move. I would need the <laughs> the reed, the abundant reed. Wait, to add rooms, it's what? Two, two reed per room. So that would be one to renovate, two, three, four. Yeah, so that's enough reed. That's, that's all the reed I would need for the rest of the game if I grab that reed right now. And that's all the clay I would need. So that's two moves to get the reed and the clay. And then three moves to do a renovation. Think, 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 think. I wouldn't be able to do it all in this stage, but the renovation would be, you guys are all about that drinking trough. Um, ooh. When you play this card, you receive a vegetable and vegetables are worth three food to me. So I could, oh man, oh, tricky. The pumpkins look nice. Don't they look nice? Yeah. Let's take a look at one of those. Vegetables. Not pumpkins, vegetables. <laughs> Shh. I don't know. It's called vegetables. I don't know. You killed all the sheep. Not much need for the trough now. Well, yeah, that was my hope. I had to eat those sheep. What are you? <laughs> Just don't get my case with the sheep. <laughs> this is how farming works. I hate to break it to you. Huh. Um, man, it's a, this is a little bit of a puzzle. Um. Food still, still a, still a trick. Hmm. Think, think, think. Let's go back to the board. Think, 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 think. It's all the read I need. It's comforting to know that's all the read I need, and that's all the clay I need. I have four moves, but I really want to. I think I should do the food investment thing. I think should. I think I should plow. Plow, what does it cost me to get this this vegetable? Why would I do that? I wouldn't do that with a with a minor action cost of food to do it. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't play it. Why would I play this? I wouldn't play this unless it was just like a bonus thing, but it cost me a food. So I wouldn't do that. I would take it from here instead, wouldn't I? Wouldn't I? Okay. So plow one field gets me two plowed fields. Take a vegetable gets me a grain and a vegetable, and then sow and or break bread, bake bread, <laughs> I keep saying break bread, gets me an investment. Okay, that's three, and then I would have a fourth action left. With the fourth action, I would take all the reed I need. Does that make sense? Or all the clay, it doesn't matter, one or the other. And I think Oh, no, no, no. With the fourth action, I would need to take the extra f food that I need to live. So with those three actions, I would get one extra food and a, pump, uh, a pumpkin, a vegetable, which would turn into three food. So it would be four food, five, six on the sheep. So I could take the reed now. I could take the reed now. Huh. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, let's enact that plan. Here we go. Here we go. Step one. Step one, take the reed. I think. All your reed are belong to us. All right. That was step one. And then step two, what did I say? Plow a field. So back here on the homestead, there's my field plowed. Fantastic. And then we go back here and we take everybody back. So you come back and you come back. We're going to flip the next card. And we're going to go up around. The next one is one wild boar. So following along, two would go here. Two, two. One clay goes here. One reed goes here. One food goes here. One sheep over here. Do, 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 one stone up there. Okay. 
and one wild boar that looks almost exactly like a stone because it's bad decisions on <laughs> the part of the publisher, I think. Pink would have been nice, wouldn't it? Nice pink pigs. But maybe it's not medieval. I don't know. Interesting how veggies is three food, don't you think? Is that, is that like a... Are you trying to get me to eat my greens? I don't understand why you're pointing that. I don't eat enough vegetables. Is that what you're trying to say? Fine, I know. I know. Clearly, look at my wan complexion. I don't eat enough vegetables. All right. <laughs> Touched a nerve. Uh, banner blocking again. Nope. Good, I got it. It's off. It's off. Let me see. So then my next two moves were to... Oh, but that boar is also worth three food. Hmm, the boar is worth three food if I sell it with the cooking hearth. Hmm, interesting, 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 interesting. And think, 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 think. I'm, I, I'm, I, this is dangerous, right? When you start like second guessing yourself and losing. I have two moves before I need to feed everybody. I need six food. My whole plan was to take this lady and put her on the take one vegetable. There's my vegetable. And then my next move was to take this lady and put her on the sew and or bake bread space, which looks like that. And then over here, that means that I get to put my wheat on here and I get two more on top because it's grown, magical. And then I put my vegetable here and I get one more vegetable on top of that. Great. I don't think Ryan knows much about cooking hearts. I know that they're big enough to carry a cattle to market. What's your, I don't see what you're driving at. Okay, uh, so harvest time. The first thing you can do is harvest your vegetables and grains, which I will do pluck, pluck, and I've got them. Great, the next thing you gotta do is feed your family, uh, which I can do, right? So uh, cooking hearth I carry <laughs> to market. That's three food. That guy's four food and then five, six is the sheep all carried gently, delicately in the cooking hearth to market. Everything's good, family fed. Great, and then the next thing is that the sheep breed, so I have at least two, so there's that sheep back again. No problem. Whew. Okay, so we're gonna go up to stage uh, three and down to round one. Again, two more, two more rounds before harvest happens, so that means still, with only two family members, I have four moves. And let me just pay everything down. So, do two wood. I'm gonna let that build up until it's enough to build up the rest of my pastures. One clay, one reed, one fish, one stone, one sheep, and one wild boar. Okay, I feel it, I feel the pressure. It's, 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 this game's a nail biter, it, it really is. How am I gonna do everything? Four moves, four moves before harvest. Four moves, actually let's start going over here. There, that's a bit better. Four moves until harvest. Here we are. Hmm. Oh, and we flip this one over. It's gonna be one stone. Great. Okay. Four moves to get six food. Man, I don't know. I'm regretting this this grocer decision, BDM. I don't know. Tell me if I'm using them wrong, but and I also have to get my renovation of my whole stone strategy thing going. I think it's time to do to do that. Or is it time to be able to fence in more animals? Or is it time to, okay, after renovation, also one major or minor improvement. Interesting. So, so the, hold on, let me think. One major or minor improvement. So now I could do the mini pasture, which would allow me to fence a space no, why would I want to do that? Why would I want to do that? Instead, what I would want to do, that's a, a vegetable for food. That's not, uh, yeah. Because now that's now that's more interesting, right? That, that's one food in exchange for three food, so up two food. 
So that's an interesting one to play in the minor player. I'm just looking at uh, renovation over here. If I renovate, uh, I also get to pay, play a minor improvement. You guys were on and on about that drinking trough. I don't know. Let me just take another quick look at the occupations because I'm worried that I'm going to forget. Pay two less clay. Oh, here we go. Pay two less clay to renovate a clay to a clay hut and two less stone to renovate to a wood hut. And very important. And he's very important too. Okay. These guys. So I have two occupations, which means I would need to pay two food in order to use this occupation. Two less clay to renovate to a clay hut. And so right now the clay hut's gonna cost me one per room and I only have two rooms. So it cost me, oh, check this out, zero clay to renovate to a clay hut. I like, I like where all this is going. This is good. This is very good. Yeah. Okay. And boars are worth three apiece. Okay. Okay. I think I got it. I think I got it. Okay. Wait, keep it all in your head, right? So step one is we're going to play an occupation. Uh, occupation. Boom. And that's going to cost me two food, which is a sheep being carried to market in a cooking hearth. No problem, two food done, the occupation is played. The renovator pay two less clay to renovate to a clay hut. Great, that's step one. Step two is we take this lady and we put her in renovation. So that is gonna cost me two clay and one reed, but really it's only gonna cost me one reed because of my renovator. Great, so that means that I get to flip these two tiles to clay and now I have a clay hut one step on the road to a stone house okay good so that was the, that was that round great I'm gonna bring these ladies back home and pay everything down too good Brian has stopped reading our annoying banter I don't blame him I think he's trying to play a game or something sorry what am I missing what are you saying the trough sounded awesome when it looked like you were going to manage the livestock and not cook them all. Well, sure. I still want to see a justification for that grocer. <laughs> one clay, one reed. I'm glad that I got a clay hut without actually having to take any clay. One fish over here, one sheep, one stone, um, one wild boar, which will be crucial to my eating strategy this round, and one stone. The new thing is going to be one cattle. So cows come out, moo, yes. All right, and we're in round two of stage four. Thank you for the chapter marker. <laughs> Not another harvest, yeah, exactly, another harvest. So two moves before harvest time. What's important to do? The things that are important to do are as follows, as follows. Step one, let's get this. I renovated, right? I renovated, but I didn't do, I didn't do the uh, the minor, the minor improvement that I meant to do. Sorry, I'm on the wrong camera, dude. This thing right here, I meant to do this. So, let's say go back a little bit in time. So it costs two food. So I'm losing one more sheep to do it, which maybe is not the best plan in the world, but. I'm doing it in poor, it's important because it says when you play this card immediately fence, fence one space in your farmyard and you don't have to pay wood to do it. I will take that. And I will take that because uh, the very first thing I need to do is go here. Oh, no, wait. So I got two moves. I got two moves. If I buy the cow, that's four food. I don't know why this name tag keeps showing up in front of my face. If I buy the cow, that's four food, no problem. And I need, but I need six. Oh, but I'm going to be harvesting food as well. Okay. If I buy the boars, they're worth three apiece. So that's nine food. So two of those boars and I can hang on to one. 
So one of my people is going to get f f animals. That's for certain. I think the boars are a better idea. So let's get those boars. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I can I can do this, right? I can just rearrange my animals, right? I can put the sheep there and the boars here, no problem, yes? And I could also have an animal in my house if I wanted to. Correct me if I'm wrong. So now, for future planning, here's the deal. I need to get up to a stone house. Let me just double check these suckers to make sure that I'm doing the right thing. Once you have a stone house, you can pay one food at the start of each round. So that'd be three more rounds. No, two more rounds because it would take me a round to play him. Um, to plow at most one field. Which means I think that I should get him out sooner than later. Like now. But it would cost me how much food? It would cost me one, two, three, sorry, zero, one food, two food. Yeah, it cost me three food to get him. So that would be an entire pig to get him out there, the plow driver. Interesting. Yes. I think I might do it. I think I might do it. I might do it. I might do it because I got my food covered. This is three, six, nine boars. I might do, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay, that's what I'll do with my last person. Is I will go to occupation land. I'll play my third occupation, which you can't see because it's off the screen, which costs me three food. So that's a boar carried to market gently in the Sheep can just jump the fence. I know they're very high fences. You're right, but they're extremely high fences, so I built them that way. They're really, like, you can imagine them like like this, so it's okay. <laughs> I just, I, you know how Facebook, like, reminds you of stuff you posted? I posted this tweet. From, it reminded me, like, three years ago you posted this. I just thought it was funny. It's like, if you fall asleep on the job one more time, you're fired. Now we need you to go do the sh count sheep inventory. <laughs> Oh, no. Uh, that's funny. Great, great. In the middle of that story, I forgot what I was doing. Oh, right. I did the plow driver. So that means I only get two rounds. Pay one food at the start of each round to get. Okay. I don't know if that was a good idea. Because I'll only get two... No, it's good. It's still good. It's still good. It's still good. That was a good idea. That was a good idea. That was a good idea. I make good decisions. <laughs> right. Here we are. I'm going to take the ladies back. It is a harvest round, which means that first we harvest our foods. Off comes a grain. Off comes my last vegetable. Second step, feed your family. So... This is going to be, I need six food. This is going to be two food. No, I got to do the cows or the pigs, don't I? Three food. I'm trying to keep the variety in my farm, right? Three, four, and then two sheep for a five, six. Hmm. Mm hmm. I think that's bad because I'm going to be. Battle rooms. Think, think, think. I do have that card, which gets me a vegetable. So because I have that card. I think I can get rid of my vegetable, which would allow me to keep the pig. It would allow me to multiply things without having to take an action. Okay, so this is two food, three food, five, six. So I'm gonna do that instead and hold on to those pigs so that they'll breed. 
because I I can get them I can get the I can get the uh, the vegetable back from that card. Did anyone die? No, nobody's died yet, and no begging has happened. So I just fed my family, my pigs breed, and we're on to the next round or the next stage. Sorry, second last stage. All right. So it's gonna be. I'm hitting the wrong button. There you go. It's gonna be family growth, even without space to grow, which seems tempting, but like nine food, nine food with. Um, one, two, three, four, five moves. Nine food, five moves. Hmm. Would you do it? I don't know if I would do it. I don't know. I've got the stone house strategy. Wait, nine food. Two, four, six. There's eight food right there on the fishing space already. So maybe that's not the risk that I thought it was. Uh, <laughs> the wild boar goes down here, the stone up here, the cattle down here. All right. There's always money in the banana stand. You're so right. Okay, nine food. Because that pile of eight foods there, I think that's like a no-brainer. Like that's a hotly contested spot when you're playing multiplayer. People like, there's a there's a space here that we're not talking about because it really doesn't matter for solo mode. Uh, it lets you take the starting player and play one minor improvement. So like that matters a lot in the multiplayer game, obviously not in the solo mode, but people will like camp that just in anticipation of this space coming out because it's such a powerful space. Actually, there are all three of them really powerful right at the end there. So. I'm going to do that, which gets me this guy, Joe Bob. He's a baby right now, or he's untrained. I don't know. He's my sexy gay farm laborer, as Andy would put it. Um, but he uh, he only eats one food now, but I'm going to get him back, so he's going to eat three by the end. <clears throat> do you guys think I'm destroying too much stuff? Is that a problem? No, this is good, man. This is when... All my chickens come home to roost. Okay. Let me just look at how this stone strategy is doing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight of them. It would cost me two, no, it would cost me zero of them. Zero of them to renovate to stone. And then each room in a stone house costs five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, and I would get nine by going there, so I'd have to wait till the next round to take the stone, and that would be 10. And what is the card? This Mason is the guy that I wanna to play to get an extra stone room, which would fill up like that. And then the one that lets me uh, plow is the plow driver. So what I really need to do now is no, I can't. I can't take the baby right now. I can't do a baby. No babies. No babies. The womb is closed. No, that does not. That that does not work because I'll explain. The plow driver, when I upgrade to a stone house, lets me spend a food each round to plow one or more field. Oh, plow one field at most. So because it's like it's so late in the game, I need I need to get a stone house here so that I can do that on these two rounds. Plow, plow. You see what I'm saying? So, so that solves it. I need to, it's stone house time and I don't have the stone Oh shoot, but I'm gonna be one stone short if I take it now. Oh no! Oh no. Oh, but I have the grocer. <laughs> the grocer might save me. There's a stone. I would just have to dig down to it, pay two food, three food to get it. I don't know. This, <laughs> this is messy. It's a messy. It's messy. Okay, well, 
I think I, I have to take this now, even though it's just like one stone short. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stone. That's a requirement. And then the second thing that happens is my second person goes to renovation. It's gonna cost me, because of my renovator, it's gonna cost me zero stone, uh, because it would normally be two stone, right? One per room, plus a reed for the roof. Whoops, I put it in the sheet pile because they're the same color and they are almost the same shape. Yeah, rule number one of worker placement games, get more workers. I know, I know, I'm doing something, I'm doing something different. I'm doing, I know, I know, I know, I know. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, I, just, I don't know, I just wanted to see this thing play out. I think I've tried this before and it's worked unspectacularly and so I haven't learned from my past mistakes. But let me just get these stony houses out. So I've now upgraded to a very safe and secure stone house by paying zero stone and one reed. Great. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I forgot to take the extra stone that my extra stony... Oh, wait. Oh, oh, it's enough stone because over here in the cards that you can't see, I have, um, I have a stone carrier. Whenever you take stone with an action, you also take an additional stone. So there's an additional stone. And I also have these stone tongs. Uh, we receive one additional stone. Bang, I've got my 10. Great. Fan freaking tastic. Great. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Good, 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 good. Yes. Right, take the people back. And uh, we're gonna go up one round. I'm gonna flip, excuse me, I'm gonna flip this. There's the round counter. So it's plow one field and or sow. Very nice. Because I have a stone house. Hold on, we'll see what that means. Uh, let me just pay everything down. This is wood. There's so much wood. Oh my lord. That's wood. This one's clay. This one's reed. That's a food. And that's a sheep. That's a stone. That's a boar. Another stone. And a cattle. Great. Great. So, two more moves. Two more moves and six food. Though it would be nice to have three people for the last round, wouldn't it? So if I make a beat, oh, wait, 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 first, the plow driver, very important. The plow driver says, uh, once you have a stone house, which I do, you can pay one food at the start of each round to plow at most one field. So this pig is going to become three food. Now, in case you're wondering how that works, I trained the pig to do very delightful and exciting tricks, took the pig to market, the, market, uh, the pig did a little bit of, of tap dancing and we put out a hat and that's what I used to pay for the food. That's how that worked. The pig is fine. So, you can play Uwe Rosenberg's if you're v Rosenberg games if you're vegan. It's it's no problem. <laughs> it's, it's no problem whatsoever. Great. So I have the three food, and I'm going to pay one of those food in order to plow one field. Do 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 do. And the field I'm going to plow is going to be right there. Grand. Grand. Okay. Next. Next. The nine food that I need are right here. So it seemed foolish for me not to just go there and take these nine food. Even though they're, um, maybe not actually. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Maybe that's a chump move because if I go here and take the sheep, the sheep are each worth, each worth two food. The cattle are worth four a piece. So if I took the cattle, hold on. If I took the sheep, two, four, six, eight. It's eight food, and I would get one grain, and I would be able to breed a sheep. That looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Sheep looks pretty good because it actually paid dividends. The boar. If I took the boar. I have two of them already, and they're worth three piece to me, so that would be six food, 
nine food, that's what I would need. I would only have one boar left and I would not be able to breed boars. So I think it's better, I think, to take the sheep. I think it's better to take the sheep. Two, four, six, eight. Yeah. But then that would wipe out my that would wipe out my veggie supply. It's okay. It's okay. Agricola, <laughs> the animal loving RPG. <laughs> da -da! Yeah. Um I think the play is sheep. I think it's sheep. Okay. Yeah, I think it's sheep. <laughs> so, oh, oh, sweating here. Okay, I'm gonna take these sheep. Can I fit them all? Wait, before I take the sheep, can I fit them all? There's and these guys are gonna go over here, so I'm gonna go two, four, six sheep. And there's six sheep there. So yes, I can fit the sheep. Put up, put up, put up. Fantastic. That is move number one of two for the second, or the last round in the second last stage of the game. Okay. Sheep's doing a little headstand. Okay. Okay. So one person. Now the, the big kick-ass renovation space is coming up, so I'm not gonna do it. Not gonna do it, wouldn't be prudent. And I need to hang on to this guy. I need to be able to play the occupation next. Oh, so the baby, the baby space is what I want. Yes, of course, the baby space is what I want. The baby space, or the extra family member, family growth, boom. So we get another family worker. Joe Bob, where are you? There you go. Great, and now I'm gonna take everybody back. And it's harvest time. So I need seven food. I think I miscounted that. I thought it was nine for some reason. It's oh, no, it's seven. It's seven. Baby space equals more food. Yeah, but in the solo game, it costs three food to feed everybody. But if it's a baby and you don't get to use that baby, um, it's just one food. Babies are reduced cost. Yeah, babies are only one food um, if you don't get to use them. If you do get to use them in one round, so that's why it like, makes more sense to hold back and get them at the end of the round, but if you're playing multiplayer, you don't want to hold back on anything because there's competition for the spaces, like if that makes sense. So, all right, so I have I have a baby. The baby's only gonna cost one food. These two both cost three food a piece. So seven food, which I can do, which I can do because the sheep who are being carried lovingly and gently to market in the cooking hearth, uh, it's like a, <laughs> it's like, a, you know those bike trailers? My wife, Cheryl, used to like, truck our kids around in Toronto in one of those bike trailers that will sat and like, it's like that. We didn't eat our children. <laughs> Two, four, six, and we harvest this. That's seven, but I don't think I want to use it. So two, four, six, eight. So I'll get a food back. Oh, I didn't realize I had three food sitting here too. If I have three food sitting there, then I'm going to Pay those two food and hang on to the sheep. Two, four, six. Was that two, four, six? That was two, four, six. Did I pay enough? Sorry, I just confused myself. I was holding three sheep, right? Because I had that, yes, two, four, six. And I had these two. I think I didn't pay enough. So what I wanted to do was Hold one sheep back, so that's two, four, five, six, seven. There, I think that's even Stevens. Great, which allows me to hang on to this so I can potentially plant it. All right, here we go. Will Ryan do it? Likely not, but whoa, on fire. <laughs> now we now we can't see. Bajoom, Badoom. Great. Yes. So that's last round. And we're in. Round one, family size three. Round zero, no, that's not true at all. Round one, six of six, here we go. Where's BDM when you need him? Uh, rules Gremlin, am I right or wrong? What did I miss, what did I miss? Are we, are we arguing uh, maybe about the family member? I mean, I, I have, I don't like pulling out the rules in the middle of a stream, but I can read it to you in case you don't believe me, or if I'm getting wrong what you think I'm getting wrong, Hold on, let me know. So it says in the solo mode, uh, do 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 do. 
<laughs> mm. It says, adult family members must be fed three food at each harvest time. Newborn offspring are still only fed one. We're good, I hope. That space lets you get another person without room. Yeah, sorry if I didn't clarify what that space does. You don't need the extra room, the extra farm room to get that person. You just get that person. Oh, oh no, yeah, yeah, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. Yeah, that's, I didn't read uh, clearly the uh, the rule on that, on that space. You don't need the extra room, so you can, this, this can never happen unless you use that space. So, in three moves, I need to get nine food and I need to, fulfill this 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 stone promise so like i already know i already know it, uh, the food is like already here two four six eight nine the food's already there oh and uh, i'm going to spend the food off the top in order to so i'll, I'll <laughs> I'll juice another sheep to get two food and then I'll pay one food in order to plow a field as my plowman dictates. So that's how I'm looking. It's looking pretty good. It's looking pretty good. Play like the trolls then. <laughs> yeah, Ferris is talking about. So there's an expansion to Caverna. Caverna, he followed this game up with Caverna and people who really liked Agricola I think don't always go for Caverna because Caverna doesn't have like this knot that I'm feeling in my stomach right now uh, and not being able to feel and it's it, I got to say the pressure I mean I'm just feeling the pressure because I'm on a, I'm a I'm on a live stream but in real life when you're playing against other players the pressure is like don't take that space because everything's so tight right and if one person takes one space that you needed at the wrong time Oh, it just explodes your entire, it's, it's so, it's so brutal. Caverna doesn't really do that. It's a lot looser. There's more ways to get points. It's nowhere near as strict. They came out with an expansion called the Forgotten Folk. And one of the races, so you can play different fantasy races, including like trolls and uh, fairies and elves. So the trolls, <laughs> their deal is each family member eats an absurd, they need a whole lot of food. I can't remember what it is per family member. Is it? What is it, Varus, is it three or four? It's some some nonsense number of food, but they can eat everything. There's dogs in the game, and like the rule of the game is that you can't eat dogs in Caverna. But if you're the trolls, yeah, go ahead and eat some, <laughs> eat some dogs, it's fine. You can just be, like, you can eat rocks, you can just basically just devour everything because they're just voracious, these these trolls. It was pretty, it was pretty fun playing it. So I might actually uh, bust out the Forgotten Folk on an upcoming stream during Uwe Rosenberg month. Great. Now, the thrilling conclusion to this thing. Nine food required. And I just realized the value of the grocer. Here's the value of the grocer. It costs me a food to get everything in here, but I can do it without taking an action, I believe. Play from, uh, okay. At any time, you may buy the top item for one food. So, if I... If I... Well, hold on. Let me just stick with my original original plan and just make sure that I can do everything I want to do. So, so, okay. I'm going to take this massive pile of food. That might not be the best option I have. I only have three moves. Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's step one. This might be a bad idea. I say that a lot, don't I? But I won't have cows. Three moves. I have the sheep, I have the pigs, I need the cows. So maybe going for that fishing space isn't the thing. Maybe Getting the cows is the thing, but I have no place to put the cows. I'd only hang on to one cow if I did that. And there's three cows. And you can't you can't eat them as you take them home. You can't just chew on a cow as you're leading it back to your farm. You have to first house it and then you can take it to market in the cooking pot. 
So I can't do that. So I might have counted myself out of cattle this game, which is probably going to be devastating score-wise. Let's just take a quick look at the scoring sheet. So cattle, if you have zero, you lose a point. It's one point. I don't know how burned I am about that. I think it's more important. I think it's more important to do the. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> okay, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. So, step one is gonna be going on the juicy, juicy after renovation. Uh, no, not renovation, God no, that's not the right thing at all. Um, it's gonna be up here, let me get the camera in the right place. It's gonna be up here, build rooms is what I wanted to do. So, Let me make sure that I'm, I've got everything, all my ducks in a row. So it's gonna cost five, five stone and two reed per room. And I have, happen to have one, two, three, four, five stone, one, two, three, four, five stone, and two reed per room. There's my two reed. There's my two reed. So that's all the reed and all the stone that I need in order to, in order to convert or to add two more stone rooms. If I can find the tiles, there they go, to my farm. Mm, that look nice. And then I have to, and this is where it falls apart. Oh no, it's good, it's good, it's good. I think it's still good, I think it's still good. I think it's still good to go here and take all this stuff. And you'll see why in a moment. So we're gonna take one, two, three, go and fish in four, five, six, seven, nine food. Okay, okay, cool. Nine food. And then I'm going to take, how do I have four people? I took him off the table. He doesn't belong there, what the heck? And then I'm gonna take my last person, my last person and I'm gonna put them on the occupation space and I need to pay so much, so much money or food for this occupation. So I have how many occupations? First one's free, then one, then two, then three, then four, five food. Okay, fine. Five food, one, two, three, four, five food, down the hole. And I have five left plus a green. Okay. In order to play the Mason occupation, once during the game, at any time after your stone house reaches four rooms, you can extend it by one room at no cost. I just want to make sure that this is the highest scoring thing. I think it is. This one, at the end of the game, you receive one bonus point for each room in your stone house. In total, you receive three points per room instead of two. So this would be an additional two points, but this would be an additional three points. Buddy costs two food, which I am loath to give him. So I think... I think this is the guy. So I'm gonna pay, play the mason, which lets me build one more stone thing, which is too bad because I thought, I, I always get renovation and, uh, and, and build rooms confused. So I thought that I would be able to spend just a couple of these woods, you know, with, on, one more, on one more pasture. But the other thing that I get to do is I'm gonna spend, well, maybe this is a bad idea. This might be a bad idea. Spend this money to buy, uh, one, two, three, four. I'm gonna spend four food to take this grocery stack off. I don't know if that was a dumb idea or not. That might've been. Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure why he is why he paid so much food. It's not different in solo. What did I do wrong, BDM? <laughs> Ryan, check Ben's chat. <laughs> it's only one food per next occupation. Holy crap! <laughs> Mr. Noodle, did I do something terribly wrong <laughs> again? I think I did. Let me reread that.
I've got some food coming back to me, y'all. <laughs> Every single time on this stream. Every single time. <sighs> oh my God, how do I undo this? Well, maybe you can help me fairly undo it. So I paid, <laughs> I paid, what did I pay? One, two, three, four. I paid five food for this guy when it should have only been four food for this guy. One, two, three, four. Um, so I'm gonna undo a couple of things. <laughs> I'm gonna take four more food back. One, two, three, four to put these things back on the stack. Let me just see, it goes. Uh, <laughs> so it should be pile from bottom to top. One vegetable, one reed, one clay, one wood, a vegetable, a stone, a grain, and a reed. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many fish did I take? Do you guys remember how many fish I took? Was it eight or nine? Because I kind of want to give them back because I think I can do something better. I thought I needed all of those. Plus, there's all the f food overages I paid for all of my occupations, which I'm going to claw back. I just don't see a pond for all of my fish friends. They're, why they're right, the pond's right here. Look, these, look at all these ponds up at the top. The fish are fine. Nothing bad's happening to the fish. What link did you just put up? Um, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Let's say it took eight from the fishing space. It might've been nine. I'm not too sure. Hopefully I'm not cheating too terribly. So that means that uh, for my third occupation, I got confused because I thought instead of paying one per additional occupation, I thought it was one additional per additional. So like, Occupation number two costs you a food. Occupation number three costs you two food. And I thought it ramped up like that. It's completely wrong. Total, total boner. So let me try to undo it. Um, so he's good. He only cost me one. So that means that I paid um, zero for him, two for him. So I overpaid by one, three for him. So I overpaid by two, which is a total of three four for him, so overpaid by three, so six, so I should be getting six food back. Did I overpaid by six food? Oh my God. So that means I'm gonna take at least one of those in sheep because I would have had that. <laughs> I would have had that. Six food, oh my God. Well, that takes the pressure off, doesn't it? Six food, and instead of going here, I'm going to go somewhere where it's a little bit, uh, a bit more advantageous. Hmm. I could build, I could build the, the last pasture, but that's like only one point. I could do the family growth, and then I would have to pay three, six, nine, ten food. Hmm. Ten food. How much food can I do now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then a boar. But I don't want to eat the boar. But I could collect the boar. I could take the cattle and just toss two of them. So there's three cattle here. Okay, let's try. Let's try. Yeah. Or I could plow one field and sow. Yeah, this is better. I think this is better. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do with my last turn. So plow one field and sow. So that eats up the space on my board. That's great. And I'm, I am going to pay one, two food in order to get this from the grocer. And I'm gonna pay two more food in order to get these two from the grocer. So that means that one, two, three, four. 
So that means that one ISO, I'll do that. Uh, 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 uh. Well, if that was a good idea or not. I don't know. I don't math very well at all. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Counting it up. Let's let's put let's put the game out of its misery. Hey, do you do this? Do you uh, do you keep your score sheets from past games that you played? I think this is really neat. I mean, I have BG stats now. I was more doing this when I didn't have BG stats. That's a cool phone app where you can track all of your plays. But look, it's neat to sort of flip back and see all the scores. I like this. I should actually punch these in, but I didn't keep the date on them. So that's another thing that I'm starting to do more and more is just to keep the date on the score sheet. So let's let's go. Okay, name. I got that one. That one's easy. My name is Ryan. Yeah, the grocer did maybe pay off at the end of it. I don't know. I don't think. I don't know. At a, at a glance, do you think I'm getting more than uh, more than fifty? I uh, somehow doubt it. But let's see how it goes. Okay. So, fields. I have two fields. It doesn't matter the size of the field. Oh, sorry. That's pastures. I always get it confused. Sorry. So. <laughs> Fields are, are these things, one, two, three, four, five. So I have five fields, and let me just look at the scoring sheets. Fields, if you have five plus, you get four points. So I get four points for fields. Pastures, I have two pastures. The size of them doesn't matter. So under pastures, if you have two pastures, you get two points. Grain, if you, I have one, two, three, four. Wait, did I feed my family? I didn't, holy crap, I didn't even do the last harvest phase, my God. Um, <laughs> right, so I owe, I owe nine, I owe nine. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, and I gotta eat one sheep to do it, but that's fine, I'll do it. I'll eat one sheep. Okay. Oh, that was a close one. And then my animals breed, so I get that one sheep back because there's at least two. And I get a pig who lives in my house because he doesn't fit in the pasture. Great. Cool. So grain. I have two grain. And when you have two grain, you get doo -doo -doo, one point. So one point for my grain. It's not looking good. Vegetables. I have one vegetable. And when you have one vegetable, you get one point. Sheep. I have four sheep. When you have four sheep, you get two points. Oh my god, how do you get up to 50 on this game? Yeah. Uh, wild boar, I have two wild boar. When you have two, you get one point. Oh crap. Cattle, I have zero, so I lose a point. Unused spaces, I have one, so I lose a point. Fenced stables, I have zero, so... Uh, I think it's just zero points, isn't it? Uh, do, 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 do. I guess zero. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. Clay hut rooms. I have zero. Stone house rooms. I have five. And so the stone house rooms are worth... Uh, I didn't get this guy out, so they're not worth three apiece. Who did I get? That guy. So they're worth, uh, they're worth two, two apiece. Are they not? Yeah, two, two, four, six, eight, ten for the stone house. Family members are worth three points a piece, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yes, so three, six, nine points. Uh, points for cards, I have. You can't see them; they're off the camera. But trust me, I have. I thought I had at least one minor improvement that got me a lousy point. I do the cooking hearth, a major improvement. Great, one point on my cards. And bonus points, I have no bonus points because I didn't get the chief out. I went too overzealous on that stone strategy. So to add it all up, four plus two is six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 10, nine, 19, uh, 19 plus nine is 28, 20, wow. 29, 29 big points. A far cry from the 50 that you need to even proceed in the campaign in Agricola. Holy crap! But... Beats Poppy 17. Uh, I'm just gonna say, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying I'm a better player than Poppy, <laughs> but I'm just saying... To get 29 points in Agricola, hmm. <laughs> what did you think? 
<laughs> it felt a little bit though like uh like when i botched that one rule in uh in terraforming mars and again stiff myself like 20 bucks through the course of the game stiff myself all that food so maybe a tainted win for the game uh if you're keeping score ryan versus board games uh board games eight ryan zero this isn't even like i didn't even think this was like a win thing because it was a beat your own score thing and so i had i had i guess no score to beat before and i beat that score that non-existent score i beat it i got more than non-existent points so at the very least personal best wise my uh my number to beat is 29 in my first solo game of a Greek club, shorting myself tremendously. So your second game was 31. Poppy, it sounds like we're pretty evenly matched. I want to hear from BDM though. What was, uh, wh what do your scores look like now? And then I don't know if it's going too back, too far back into the mists of time to tell us what you kind of started out at. But I want to know what your uh, first couple of game games of solo Agricola look like. Sorry if you mentioned already. Ooh, trough is a point if you used. Yeah, I didn't use the trough. <laughs> the trough. I don't know, man. That grocer kind of paid out at the end. I can see why it's valuable because you you don't need to take an action or anything and you can just like burn food to eat up this whole stack, right? So if you need if you need a vegetable or you need a, a grain for diversity or because you're plowing or whatever, it's, it's, it's pretty good, but I found it not all that good at the beginning, obviously. Uh, just waiting for that 15 to 45 second chat delay to catch up so BDM can brag about brag about his score. He's the resident expert, by the way. If you want to hang out with uh, the crew that you see in chat right now and uh, tons of other exciting folks, that's the link to the Discord server. If you've never been on a Discord server, but you know things like IRC or ICQ back in the day, or even Facebook Messenger, that's all it really is. It's just like a, like a place full of walls of text and different channels that you can jump into. And on our server, we've got a bunch of interesting channels, including a game scheduling one, which if you hop into that, we're playing all the time together on uh, Board Game Arena. Our castles of burgundy tournament is still going on reminds me i have a turn to take in it right now so sorry for holding other players up but yeah we're uh, we're playing games together all the time there i hope you can join us i hope that you can join us for the rest of uve rosenberg month this was sort of the kickoff video on saturday night at eight please join me and david as we uh, muddle our way through aura at labora at the two player count it's a weird game because it's like Oh, you want to add a player to the game? Completely different rules. Oh, you're taking two players away? Completely different rules. You got to unscrew. You actually have to unscrew parts of the board and reconfigure them. Like, like physically, uh, anyway, to get a different player account. Uh, the week after that, Cheryl's going to be playing Lahav with me. The week after that, uh, David's going to come over, or sorry, Dave is going to come over, and we're going to play a Feast for Odin together. You can also look forward to a Feast for Odin Bits Please episode. <laughs> That should be very exciting and uh, on the route from Asmodee is Halatau which is about hops brewing or hops growing that uh, Shawnee O is going to play with me uh, towards the end of the month and uh, uh, Patchwork Christmas if you are a fan of the more casual uh, like two player stuff so look forward to it all I hope that you can join me of course I'm going to promote it out the wazoo if anything anybody has anything else to say hold on my second game okay Poppy says second game is 31. BDM is not copying to any sort of score. Thanks for putting those covers up in case people aren't familiar with the games. All really cool games. Uwe Rosenberg does some really, really neat stuff. So if you don't know the stuff, hopefully this will be a chance to learn Uwe's oeuvre a little bit better. Thanks for joining me on this one. Normally we'd raid. I don't know how to do it properly. So we'll do that another time. Catch you in the next one. Did you just watch that whole thing? Oh, hey, to 100% this video, click the badge to subscribe and then click the bell to get notifications when I've got new stuff.